confession to make to everyone in this room. I am a country boy with a dream. That's it. That's it. Nothing wrong with that, is there? I was born in Jonesboro, Tennessee, 67 years ago. In Jonesboro, I grew up. I still live in Jonesboro. I've lived there all my life. A tiny town in the southern Appalachian Mountains. I was 25 years old. I taught journalism in high school. And I had some students with me, and we were driving to the nearby town to print the school newspaper. And we were listening to the radio. And on the radio was a country comedian. And he was telling this tale about hunting in Mississippi. And we were laughing and nudging each other and slapping our knees. And it occurred to me just at that moment. Why don't we have a storytelling festival in Jonesboro? Well, the idea just floated away. Literally floated away. But it wouldn't let me go. It just kept tugging and pulling, but it wouldn't let me go. So I went to the town leaders, and I said to them, um, why don't we have a storytelling festival? And they looked puzzled, and they said, well, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I says, let me tell you about my dream. I said, I feel that our world should celebrate and honor our stories. But unfortunately, they're dying. They're dying out. And we cannot lose that part of our humanity. They looked at me and they said, you know, that's a pretty good idea. Now, you do it. And so my neighbors and I rolled an old wagon up in the shadow of the Jonesboro Courthouse, right in the heart of Jonesboro, and we told stories. There were 60 people in the audience, but it was the first national storytelling festival. That festival that year, October 1973, was magical. And we knew we were going to do it again and again and again. And in fact, this coming October, we are celebrating our 42nd anniversary of the National Storytelling Festival. And over 10,000 people will come from all across the United States and some parts of the world to listen to and tell stories. But you know, something even more important happened that day around that farm wagon. The storytelling revival that we have known for 40 years was born. And what we have done over those past 40 years have, has been about the, the appreciation of story that's so critical to our humanity. Now, the revival of storytelling that happened at that time has swept across the country and across the world. But something else has happened. And you're seeing it live right here on this stage. What you're seeing today is evidence and testimony to the story revolution. There has been an enormous explosion of interest in and application of storytelling. 
as it works in our lives, as it works in our organization, as it works in the world. The storytelling revival is over. The story revolution has begun. And what the storytelling revival has done is to give a precious gift to each of you, to all of us, in the story revolution. Now, I, um, I honor and appreciate everything that has been done in storytelling over the past 40 years. But I have come to believe one important thing and that is the most important, the most powerful, the most sacred purpose of storytelling is to use our stories, to tap into the power of our stories, to envision, pursue, and live a better future. That is fundamentally what I believe. There are three steps that I used subconsciously. I wasn't smart enough to do it with a system. But subconsciously, I took three steps. Step number one, I pushed my memory back as far as I could and remembered the stories of my life that, that reflected the authentic me the passion, the values, the principles. And then I created from those stories my narrative for the future. And then I looked at the present and I gathered up the stories I was telling right at that time. And I pulled from those stories my narrative of the present of today. Now, there's a gap there, right? Well, you fill that gap. And what I did was to create a strategic story-inspired journey from the present narrative to the future narrative. Pushing away the challenges, pushing away those things that get in the way of achieving the future that I imagined. There are 7 billion people in this world. Actually, more than that, but 7 billion people. It's an enormous number. But each one of us, of those 7 billion people, have a story and they have a dream. And everybody is trying to pursue both. I have a new dream. My dream is that every one of those seven billion people, all of us here, have the opportunity at one point in the future to reimagine the future for themselves, for their organizations, their institutions, for their communities, and that they can use the stories that they have pulled from their lives, can use those stories to live a new narrative and to dream big dreams. Now, I want to leave with you three questions. And I want you to think about what that answer would be. What is the narrative of your future life? What is the future you are imagining?
But here's the big one. What is the dream, that bold, that almost insane dream that you want to come true? Thank you.